Hundreds of years ago, the Roman Empire fell. The world left shattered in its wake. My people, whom the Romans called barbarians, came to settle in its remains, in the ancient mountain stronghold of Moesia. Their boldness was matched by curiosity, and they came to adopt many of the ancient customs of their new home. Now, at the dawn of a new century, we are a people at a crossroads. In the south, the remaining Romans see us as occupiers, eyeing our territory hungrily. In the north lie the plains of our ancestors, yet we have little in common with the pagan tribes and Norsemen who rule there today. I know the mountains cannot protect us forever. If we are to endure, we must build our own kingdom here, anew, forged by the strength of our ancestors and the wisdom of the ancients. But there are a few amongst us who can read, let alone the ancient texts. I spend my days and nights in intense study, seeking to understand, to rebuild what was lost. This much I know so far. Patientia per veritatum. Endurance through truth. Welcome back to another episode of Crusader Chronicles. This is our second roleplay series here. Uh, we also have our Ghana campaign, which if you make it to the end of the video, I will... Uh, Put a link there and uh, share a little uh, a little secret with you guys but uh, yeah you can check that out after this video but this will be the start of our second roleplay campaign here so we have uh, upgraded a little bit we've upgraded our uh, technology for sure uh, hopefully you enjoyed our cinematic intro there uh, but we've also picked up the royal court expansion so that is going to be uh, definitely the focus of this campaign uh, let's just show an example here let's go with the Pope's throne room here so all kingdom level titles will have access to this kind of throne room and different events that will be going on uh, when when the ruler is uh, is holding court there so uh, I guess the Pope counts uh, counts as sort of a kingdom level title there, uh, which is why we can show this off here. And this is just really beautiful. I think this is the work of modders, uh, to be honest. I'll have to check what mod is 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 causing that there, but I will link uh, my other video, which lists the mods that I use for my roleplay campaign because uh, it'll definitely be one of those. So yeah, definitely excited to uh, build our own royal court uh, once we have a kingdom there and uh, show off some of the other features of this expansion. So with the focus on royal court there, I choose to play in Moesia here in uh, northern Greece, I suppose. Um, definitely sort of the, the the northern edge of what would be the Byzantine Empire there but uh, as usual I have shattered our world into duchies that's just how I prefer to play it makes the world a little bit more organic here uh, and uh, as Marco uh, our character here was explaining uh, this was caused by the complete and utter collapse of the Roman Empire. So, a big reason why I chose to play in Moesia and chose uh, Marco here as our character uh, was the cultural component of Royal Court. Uh, if we click that there, we now have the option to diverge our culture or even, uh, even hybridize with all their cultures there if we meet the requirements. So that's definitely something new. We 
we talked about culture in our Ghana campaign, but we were very limited in uh, in what we could change there. And now we have these additional options here. So for us specifically, we are a Bulgarian. Uh, and let's look at that a little more closely there. And uh, Marco was kind of explaining uh, a little bit of a history lesson there in the intro, but we are uh, we have Slavic heritage there, so we were a pagan Slavic people uh, who emigrated sort of down into Moesia here uh, following the Roman Empire's collapse. So we used to live sort of on the plains there uh, of the north, and you can see that we still kind of have uh, horsemanship and raiding as as a, as a tradition of our culture here. But uh, by now we've uh, we've lived in Moesia for many uh, hundreds of years and, and sort of picked up the local culture as well. You can see that we are a, a bureaucratic people, um, which perhaps is um, meaning that we have picked up or we have carried on the uh, the old Roman, you know, bureaucratic system of government there. Uh, we are also uh, Orthodox, I believe. Yes, we are Orthodox. So we've adopted uh, Christianity there. And uh, what else do we have here? We have also this option here, merciful blinding. So we can blind prisoners or criminals, which... Uh, Typically, uh, in the Crusader Kings series, at least, is uh, is something that only uh, Greek uh, cultures have access to. So, clearly, we sort of are already a bit of a melting pot here between our ancestral culture and our local uh, culture here. So, that gives us, I think, a lot of opportunity to kind of play uh, with these cultural options. There's a little bit of interplay here between our neighboring cultures as well. Uh, Marco kind of mentioned uh, perhaps some hostility with the remaining uh, Roman, uh, well, Greeks, but for, for the purpose of this story, we're calling them Romans. These are sort of the remaining Romans who have survived the fall of the empire there, but Margo kind of mentioned that uh, that they kind of refer to us as barbarians, or at least they used to refer to us that way. And we perhaps still kind of have that reputation as we're kind of considered to be oppressors and, uh, you know, subjugators of, of, of people who are not our own culture. So we're considered to be kind of these outsiders that are ruling o over someone else's land there. So perhaps that could create some hostility uh, with the neighboring Greeks here. Uh, and then we also have, uh, to the north of us, we have uh, black culture here, which to me kind of represents uh, perhaps where we have come from. I can see that they also share the uh, Cody raids uh, tradition there. Also, uh, you know, priding uh, horsemanship and the ability to raid there. But they are fairly uh, agrarian there. They are pastoralists. Um, they seem like they will make good neighbors there. They are xenophilic, so they are, you know, open uh, to interacting with other cultures there, which should make them, you know, good, good neighbors, I, w I would think. Uh, but we do kind of have a natural geographic barrier there. We are separated by this major river here. So it might be uh, more difficult for us to push north rather than south, I suppose. So I think that gives kind of a really good background, a really good cultural background uh, for this region and plenty of opportunity for, um, I guess, how we will respond to some of these uh, factors at play here. 
So Marco himself uh, is an astute intellectual, uh, clearly a uh, student of history there. He knows the history of these lands and of his people there. Uh, probably uh, he's uh, from a, you know, a, a house of, uh, of intellectuals there, of, of learned people. There's his house, House Asanas. And as he mentioned at the end of his introduction there, his house words are endurance through truth. So I thought that was very fitting for him as a scholarly uh, man. He's very interested in, you know, truth and knowledge there. And it really uh, also fits well, again, with our culture and being bureaucratic. You can kind of see how such a man or such a family uh, could have risen to controlling this region here. But uh, Marco is also a forgiving man. I think he understands, um, you know, how history played out so far. And that even though uh, there might be kind of historical uh, tensions, I guess, we are actually not too different uh, fundamentally. Uh, we, are, we are all kind of have various similarities in this region here so I don't really see Marco as someone who's going to push for war he's not going to react uh, kind of like one of our Ghana characters might have where he sees a potential threat and immediately wants to attack it uh, I think it will take a little bit of a different approach here and uh, I do think though that he probably has maybe a little chip on his shoulder. I don't think he takes too kindly to uh, being referred to as a barbarian there, uh, or sort of this, um, this stereotype that we have of being these sort of br brutish uh, occupiers here. I don't think that is how he sees himself or his people. He kind of made special mention that we, uh, we have done well to uh, assimilate into our new lands there. So perhaps his goal, I think, is to achieve uh, some respect for, for us and for our people here, perhaps forging a new Bulgarian realm here uh, that uh, will be sort of the jewel of this region and uh, perhaps a beautiful royal court uh, that we can show off there. But he's kind of run into a little bit of trouble because we are kind of living in this dark age here and the, the you know, the scope of work needed to build a functioning kingdom and realm is quite vast. Uh, definitely a lot of, you know, civil, uh, civil engineering, civil planning, uh, that kind of thing. And he is very much aware that, you know, who better to teach him all about that than the ancient Romans. That's kind of something that they were really good at. But their knowledge has kind of been lost uh, in with the fall of the empire. So he's been heavily consulting with his priest here, trying to find all kinds of, you know, ancient manuscripts and read everything you can about, um, you know, the, the wisdom that the ancient Romans might have when it comes to building a great uh, city and realm here. But uh, he is struggling, uh, probably because his priest is just has terrible learning, <laughs> terrible learning stat. Uh, he is not able to help him learn what he needs to know there. Uh, for anyone that does uh, speak Latin, you probably know that I attempted to translate, or Marco attempted to translate uh, his house words into Latin there, and uh, probably failed miserably, I have to say. I uh, n Neither of us really knew what we were doing there, so it's possible that his priest is just leading him completely uh, in the wrong direction there. So he probably needs to take another approach if he's going to learn what he needs to know 
to build his great kingdom here. And I think he'll have to uh, extend an olive branch here to the Greeks and perhaps uh, go to the source and speak to them directly. And uh, who better to do that with than our neighbor here who is a fellow astute intellectual. So perhaps uh, building a bit of a relationship with our neighbor here, and Themios. Uh, he doesn't mind us too badly, mainly because we are forgiving, and uh, I would I would guess that he is quite afraid of us. I think uh, we do have a bit of a fearsome reputation there. So, or probably not, probably not us personally, but our people have a fearsome reputation there. So, perhaps uh, building a bit of a bond here with our neighbor, who can hopefully help us uh, learn uh, learn to uh, speak and read or, or do better at speaking and reading Latin and Greek. So that is another uh, another new uh, game system here, like learning a language. I actually forget if this was part of the royal court. I feel like this was part of the royal court patch, uh, so it was part of the free patch, but it's still kind of a new system that came with Royal Court, so we can definitely try that out and do this learn language scheme with our neighbor. So we're going to try to learn the Greek language here, but uh, right now we have a pretty uh, poor chance to succeed, only 48%. Uh, our learning skill is doing the the heavy lifting there, 19, but uh, our priest's learning, our bishop's learning is definitely holding us back there. Um, so we skipped a little bit ahead here, uh, just so we could pick up our first learning lifestyle perk here, as this is going to help us with our learn language scheme here, if we choose uh, the first or the left option under uh, under scholar there, a pedagogy, uh, we will buff our learn language success chance by 25%. Uh, I think it's also worth noting that Marco has started out as something of a theologian. I wouldn't have uh, guessed that from his status there, but I guess it makes sense that he's been talking with a lot of priests and uh, has good historical and perhaps uh, religious uh, knowledge there and a good relationship with his priests there. So another uh, interesting role play tidbit there. So let's go ahead and select that here. And now let's see if that has improved our chances here. Yes, we now have 71% chance of success. But it is going to take about four years uh, to make any progress with our learning here. It looks like it dipped a little bit uh, down to 69% as well. So uh, we'll have to see if we can successfully uh, pull this off and have a little symposium uh, with our neighbor here and come away with a better understanding of the Greek language here. So, while you wait for Marco's studies to progress here, you can do some reading of your own and check out our blog, crusaderchronicles.com. You can read the full story of our Ghana campaign and uh, check out some photos of some of our other uh, non-video campaigns as well. Eventually, I will post uh, Marco's story up there as well. I'm probably going to wait until I finish uh, his video episodes, but be sure to follow the blog uh, to be notified of future posts there. And of course, you can also check out our Ghana campaign on the channel. Um, my secret for you guys is if you haven't uh, watched it yet or if you have only watched the first few episodes, check out episode 14 and finish the story from there. That is uh, where all the good uh, juicy bits <laughs> come in there. 
Uh, Ghana is fully formed by that time, and there's lots of political intrigue. Uh, definitely murder uh, and uh, murder and betrayal and uh, redemption there. So, yes, if you haven't seen the whole series, uh, start from episode 14 till the end and you get all the good bits that way. So, yeah, as a final note, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can uh, follow along with Marco's story here. Uh, we'll let him uh, get back to work there, studying hard, and we'll see you next time on Crusader Chronicles.